In 2003 and 2005, we received the games Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. As the only Pokemon games released on GameCube, or at least the only relevant Pokemon games for this video, these games had a big responsibility in delivering as much entertainment as their predecessors on the previous console, the Nintendo 64. And boy did these games deliver. Taking place in the brand new Ori region, these two brought with them some fresh and exciting differences that we never really got again. Plenty of people, including myself, hold them in high regard. And while Colosseum is fantastic for many reasons, more on that in a bit, I believe its successor is the better of the two. In fact, I think Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness is one of, if not the best Pokemon game we've ever received. Today, I want to re-explore this game and tell you why I believe it's one of the crown jewels of Pokemon we've received over the past 20 plus years. Before I start, I just want to say that this is all my opinion. Everybody has their own favorite game, which you should let me know down in the comments. And there's no definitive answer on the best Pokemon game, even if someone wants to say that there is. By no means do I think XD is 100% perfect, nor do I think any game is, honestly. And I have my improvements I would make if I had the chance. However, given what we got, especially considering the limitations of 2005 gaming, I do believe it to be one of the best Pokemon games to date. And to explain why I feel this way, I first have to talk about the foundation laid out for XD by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. Now I don't want to go too in-depth on this game as it's not the main focus of the video, but there are several things I need to discuss about it before jumping into XD. Pokemon Coliseum is the story of Wes, or whatever you want to name him, a former member of and traitor to the evil Team Snagum. Wes's job was to snag Pokemon from other trainers through the use of a device called a Snag Machine. Throughout the game, it's Wes's job to dismantle the distribution of Shadow Pokemon in the Ori region, orchestrated by the evil Team Cypher. Shadow Pokemon are Pokemon who have had the doors to their hearts artificially closed by Cypher in order to become soulless fighting machines. These Shadow Pokemon are extremely ruthless, recklessly attacking other Pokemon, even going as far as to attack trainers. You're helped by Rui, a woman with the ability to see the invisible shadowy aura coming from Shadow Pokemon, whom you rescued from a burlap sack in the beginning of the game. No, I'm not kidding. You travel throughout the Ori region together, snagging and purifying Shadow Pokemon from various trainers to put an end to Cypher's wrongdoings. Oh, and you also have a few run-ins with your old friends on Team Snagum because they're just a little pissed off about you blowing up their hideout and stealing the snag machine in the beginning of the game. Colosseum had a lot going for it off the bat that made it unique amongst other Pokemon games at the time. First off, double battles. A new battle style to the third generation of games, Colosseum leans into the concept hard with the entire game consisting of double battles, something XD stayed true to. Immediately, this brings a new level of challenge to the game, forcing the player to strategize more than would be needed in the typical 1v1 format. Second, the Shadow Pokemon. I'll go more in depth on their specific mechanics once I'm talking about XD, but the introduction of Shadow Pokemon in these games creates a completely new experience for the player from the average game. Wild Pokemon aren't really a thing in Ore, outside a few exceptions in XD, so your only way to build a team is through the snagging and purification of these Shadow Pokemon. Not only does this limit the player in terms of available team members, but catching these Shadow Pokemon is another task altogether, given that you're required to do it in the chaos of a double battle. These elements help to separate Colosseum and XD from other Pokemon games in a way that, in my opinion, makes them more entertaining. There's plenty more I can say about Colosseum, from its dark and gritty tone compared to other games, remember, Burlap Sack, to its gift of Espeon and Umbreon as your starter Pokemon. Yes, both. Oh, and they're also level 25 and 26. Like I said, plenty to say about this game on its own, but I think it's best to leave it there for now and get into the real topic of the video, Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. At the start of the game, we see a large ship, the SS Libra, cruising through the ocean when all of a sudden, helicopters and this Mangekyo Sharingan Lugia comes over and abducts the ship, leaving the two people we see on board stranded in the middle of the ocean. Anyways, after finding ourselves in a quick battle simulation between Salamence and Metagross, we start the game as Michael, or again, whatever you want, a young trainer living in the Ore region's Pokemon HQ lab, five years after the events of Colosseum. After some initial dialogue with our mother Lily and the Professor Crane, we search around to find our little sister, Jovi, who abandoned her friend while she was playing hide and seek. Nice one, Jovi. We find her at a creepy old inventor's house after battling the assistant, Chobin, with our starter, Eevee. Upon returning with Jovi to the lab, Professor Crane fills us in a bit about the events from Colosseum and shows us an invention the lab created, the Snag Machine. 
Less than a minute after trying it on for the first time, the lab is attacked by a group of strangers coming to kidnap the professor. Damn, this game doesn't hold back. We battle one of them and find ourselves fighting against a shadow Teddy Ursa. We're able to snag it away from the strange man, but unfortunately the professor is still taken away. Despite him being a crucial player to finishing the Purification Chamber, an important project being worked on in a lab related to Shadow Pokemon, our mother Lily says, Screw the professor, we don't need his ass. Okay, well that's not exactly what she said, but you get the point. She sends us off with Jovi to get a machine part from the lively Gation port. Gation, Gation... Upon arriving, Jovi immediately runs into the biggest and most aggressive looking dude, and he threatens us with his shadow Zangoose. Thanks, Jovi. Luckily, an old wealthy man named Mr. Varric and his totally not suspicious looking henchmen come by and wipe the floor with him. Great! I'm sure this is the last time we'll be seeing them. After retrieving the part, we head back to the lab and our mother tells us of a place called Agate Village. Agate? Agate? I don't know about these names where a peculiar object called the Relic Stone resides that has the ability to restore Shadow Pokémon to their natural state. When we arrive in the lush and slow-paced town, we meet Egan, the elder of the village. After a few battles to test our worthiness, Egan shows us the Relic Stone, where we can finally purify our Shadow Teddy Ursa. After talking to him a bit about the current situation regarding Professor Crane, he sends us off to his friend Vander at Mount Battle, who had supposedly seen some sinister characters out in the desert. After battling our way over to him, he gives us the whereabouts of an old cipher research facility in the desert, hoping that it may have some connection to the professor's abduction. When we arrive, we see the truck used to kidnap Professor Crane, as well as meet a colorful group of sextuplets named the Hexagon Brothers, who have difficulty counting to six. You'll get it eventually, guys. We make our way through the facility, battling many, many trainers who keep falling from the roof for some reason. After battling a truly terrifying looking woman, we are able to rescue the professor and return to the Pokemon HQ lab. This is a good spot to break off from the in-depth narration, otherwise we're going to be here for a while. You can essentially split XD into four sections, with this finishing the first. After this, just like in Colosseum, we travel around Ore, snagging and purifying Shadow Pokemon, putting an end to Cypher's wrongdoings. Overall, I really enjoy the story being told in this game. Cypher is a pretty threatening team in the grand scheme of Pokemon. Unlike the main series games, the absence of gym leaders in the Elite Four means your entire purpose in the game is to stop them. This singular goal helps establish them as a bigger deal than teams in other games, even if XD sometimes boils down to fighting your way through masses of Cypher peons. However, those masses of battles are what the game is about. So many main series games have you spend a lot of time outside of battle. While XD has little bits of this, the majority of the game is spent in battle, which typically take longer given that they're all double battles. And I don't know about you, but my favorite aspect of Pokemon is the battles themselves. Especially when the battles are challenging. I want a challenge. But anyways, Cypher is a good antagonist in my opinion. I'm also a big fan of many of the game's locations. Several of them are brought back to us from Colosseum, but there are plenty of new places that keep it from being a recycled map. One of these new locations is the SS Libra, which you find stranded in the desert after Shadow Lugia accidentally dropped it. It's such a somber scene, especially given the soundtrack. The scene as a whole really expresses the magnitude of events caused by Cypher, which again, I find to be more impactful than many things other evil teams have done. I mentioned earlier how Colosseum has a really dark and gritty story, and a lot of people think it's darker than XD's. And while I agree with this to an extent, between Professor Crane getting kidnapped, Cypher abducting a cruise liner and leaving people in the middle of the ocean to drown, and our little sister almost getting her shit rocked by Johnny Bravo over here, XD definitely has its moments. In fact, here's a short montage of awful things in this game I didn't mention. And while I agree that Colosseum's West is cooler than Michael, specifically in design, I think there's a point worth being brought up. In Colosseum, your shady past as a Team Snagum member leaves you in a bit of a morally ambiguous position as a protagonist. Meanwhile, as Michael, you're just an innocent boy who lays witness to so many travesties caused by Cypher. I mean, look at the way he takes an extra step after Crane gets kidnapped. Just a 10-year-old boy watching a grown man get abducted. Anyways, I guess all I'm trying to say here is that I'm a big fan of XD's story. 
It's refreshing and a bit dark, with great locations to explore. Funny enough though, I would say the story is one of my least favorite parts of the game. I don't mean that in a bad way though. Quite the contrary, I just think the other aspects of XD are just so well done. Let's switch gears over to some of the other aspects of the game. Quite frankly, there's a lot that I can say about how this game plays. As I already mentioned when talking about Colosseum, the double battle system gives the player the freedom to try out a number of strategies not normally available in the typical format. In addition, the structure of double battles means there's a lot more to pay attention to. In turn, these games are more difficult by default because of the increased possibilities each and every turn, something VGC players know all too well. And I think I speak for many of us when I say that a more difficult Pokemon game is more than welcome. But as great as the double battles are, there's one mechanic even more central to XD that establishes it as a unique Pokemon experience, as well as sets it apart a bit from its predecessor, Shadow Pokemon. Prepare yourself to hear that term a lot. For starters, a few basic details to get out of the way. Shadow Pokemon are at a fixed level. When you battle with them, they don't gain any experience, meaning they don't level up. Once you purify a Shadow Pokemon, it will gain all the experience it accumulated through the battles it participated in at the moment of purification. In order to purify a Shadow Pokemon, you have to decrease this meter, its heart gauge, through battling, walking around with it in your party, or by using colognes on it. Once you fully decrease the meter, you can purify it at either Agate Village or through the use of the Purification Chamber, only available in XD, which I'll touch on later. Now in Colosseum, Shadow Pokemon are very simple. Each one only knew a single Shadow move, being Shadow Rush, a 90 base power, 100% accurate move that dealt recoil damage. This move had no type interaction and always did neutral damage, so no super effective, not very effective. That was basically it to Shadow Pokemon in Colosseum. As for XD, they took it a step further. For one, XD added a lot more Shadow moves. We go from only having Shadow Rush to having 18 different Shadow moves, with there being physical, special, and status moves. Off the bat, this gives Shadow Pokemon a lot more to work with and makes them more unpredictable than their counterparts in Colosseum. But where the real kicker comes in is how these moves interact with Pokemon. In XD, Shadow moves are super effective against everything. Yes, everything. The only exception to this is that they're not very effective against other Shadow Pokemon. This massively spikes the difficulty when you're facing against Shadow Pokemon. While you're trying to weaken them and catch them, you're constantly getting hit for super effective damage, making staying alive while trying to catch them a more difficult task than it would first appear to be. In addition, this also makes for some interesting strategies with Shadow Pokemon. At first you would assume it's always beneficial to purify them, otherwise you're bound to fall behind in levels. And while this may be true to an extent, much of the end of XD is a gauntlet of battles against a lot of strong opponents, many with multiple Shadow Pokemon. The value of catching one of these strong late game Shadow Pokemon and using it on your team can't be understated. Not only can you deal super effective damage to their non-Shadow Pokemon, but you can also become a bit of a wall against theirs. You can't really use these type of strategies in Colosseum, as your only benefit to staying a Shadow Pokemon is always having a neutral 100% accurate takedown. Really helpful, huh? XD just expands so much upon Shadow Pokemon in a way that allows for more flexibility and strategy, making them one of, if not XD's most memorable mechanic. Otherwise regarding Shadow Pokemon, XD has almost double the amount available that Colosseum does. Plus, out of Colosseum's 48 available Pokemon, all but 7 of them are from the Johto region. And while this isn't necessarily a bad thing, let's just say Johto's best feature isn't necessarily the strength of its Pokemon. Meanwhile in XD you have a much longer list to use, from all 3 gens up to that point. And while this longer list of available Pokemon is partially due to the sheer number of mandatory battles in XD, I think the trade-off is well worth it. More available Pokemon just means more replayability. Even though I've played this game so many times over, I found myself using plenty of Pokemon for the first time as I was getting footage for this video. Plus, you get some really good choices throughout the game as well. Right off the bat, the game gives you Eevee for a starter, meaning you have 5 different options to evolve it into. And they don't make you wait that long for this either. While you're getting the machine part for your mom in the beginning of the game, there's a guy you can talk to who will give you one of the items you need to evolve it into whatever choice you want. In addition to this, giving the player a Teddy Ursa right off the bat is something I also find really cool. Normally a forgettable Pokemon because of how rare or late into the game it usually is, XD gives Teddy Ursa and in turn Ursaring a chance to shine in a way they haven't up to this point in the franchise. Ursaring is honestly a beast and will always be memorable for me because of this game. 
Even more on this, let's take a look at the Hexagon Brothers from the Cypher Lab. Between the six of them, you can capture Houndour, Sfeel, Seedot, Baltoy, Mareep, and Gulpin, all really early into the game. Just those six on their own are a pretty solid team that you could no doubt get through this game with. I even remember using Gulpin and eventually Swalot as a kid, and it served me pretty well, which is funny considering that my knowledge of Pokemon now would prevent me from using them at all costs. Sorry guys. And for getting me to appreciate Swalot of all things, I think XD deserves a couple extra points. Oh, and one more detail when it comes to Shadow Pokemon. Purification. Colosseum is really rough on the player, not allowing them to purify their Shadow Pokemon until fairly far into the game, just a bit before the halfway point. This seriously inhibits some of the earlier Shadow Pokemon in Colosseum, as they continue to fall behind in levels until purification is available. As someone who started with XD and then played Colosseum, which definitely plays into my bias, it was really jarring to have to wait so long until purifying became available especially when you're teased by getting to choose one of the Johto starters from the very beginning, only forcing you to wait in agony until you can finally purify and evolve them. Maybe that's a bit dramatic, but it's my video, so I'm allowed to be dramatic. XT just sets up purification better, allowing you to purify Pokemon sometimes even before you're fully ready. Plus, in XD, you get the Purification Chamber. The Purification Chamber becomes available to you immediately after rescuing Professor Crane, meaning they did finish it without him. The Purification Chamber allows you to passively purify Shadow Pokémon by putting them in a set with non-Shadow Pokémon. By putting those Pokémon in type effectiveness order, you're able to purify Pokémon faster. If your goal in this game is to capture and purify all Shadow Pokémon, which is the whole point of the game, then this mechanic is essential. With the ability to simultaneously purify 9 Shadow Pokémon at once, the Purification Chamber is a massive improvement from what we were given in Colosseum. Overall, XD took the foundation for Shadow Pokemon we received in Colosseum, and helped it blossom into a unique and layered gameplay mechanic that I can't help but find myself wanting again. I've been hoping for an XD remake or port to Switch so bad, and I can't think I'm alone in that. And I like to believe that the Shadow Pokemon alone are a big reason for others wanting this game as well. Okay, finally moving on from Shadow Pokemon, there are a few other notable gameplay things I want to mention. For one, XD introduces wild Pokemon to the Ori region. Sort of. Just a bit past where I stopped narrating earlier, you can gain access to Poke Spots, which are areas you can leave Poke Snacks in, hoping for a wild Pokemon to appear and start eating them. While going about your business, you'll get a notification for a Poke Spot on your PDA, in which case you can go there and battle it. With three Pokemon available in each spot, and three Poke Spots in total, there are nine wild Pokemon available in XD. In addition, you can trade the rare encounters from each spot to Beefcake Duking in Pyrite Town for some special Pokemon, being a Metatite, a Shuckle, and a Larvitar. All very good choices for their own reasons. While this mechanic doesn't add a whole lot to the game, I think it's a really smart way to add in some extra Pokemon without taking away from the importance of building your team from Shadow Pokemon. Another thing I want to mention is the Real Gam Tower. Initially meant to be a distraction to keep you from urgent matters happening in Fennec City, Realgam Tower is home to a couple of really interesting additions that, as intended, can distract you, or better yet, entertain you if you want a break from the main story. First of which is the Battle Sims. Similar to your first battle in the game between Salamence and Metagross, the Battle Sims allows you to participate in pre-constructed battles that essentially have you solve a puzzle in the form of a battle. Essentially, this requires the player to select the correct responses of moves in order to win the battle in a set number of turns. To participate in these battles, you need to use Battle CDs, which are a group of collectibles hidden around the region for you to find, with 50 of them in total. You also receive a prize for each one you complete. And while a lot of the prizes are generic healing items that you can buy, there are several rare candies and TMs available, making it more than worth your time to do a few of them. That is, if you can find the CDs. The Battle Sims aren't anything that special, but they're a fun way to take a break from the main story if you choose to do so, even if the intro for each CD is a bit lengthy. Not to mention, some of these battles are quite complex, and completing some of them without a guide can prove quite challenging, even for veteran trainers. And as I said before, I think a lot of us Pokemon fans appreciate an extra challenge here and there. Battle Bingo is a minigame where your goal is to clear all 10 lines on a bingo card through a series of flipping tiles to battle and catch Pokemon. Each bingo card is set up with ideal type matchups in mind, forcing the user to strategize on which Pokemon to use for what tile. While the first couple bingo cards are easy, the difficulty jumps up like crazy in later cards, with one literally giving you a Magikarp to start with. I love this concept. 
It's a really fun and interesting way to challenge the player to use their expertise to the fullest. Especially because sometimes what looks like an ideal matchup ends up working poorly for you based on the moves Pokemon have. Plus, too often in Pokemon games, the puzzles we have to solve are very simple in nature, where you're running around and pushing boulders until the correct pathway opens up. Having puzzles of Battle Bingo's caliber are always welcome in my book. And with 11 cards in total, you have plenty of content here to keep you interested if you want a break from the story. I had to stop myself from playing all of them for the sake of not taking longer on this video than I already have. Both the Battle Sims and Battle Bingo are a welcome addition to XD, and help to provide a bit more to the game that can be one-dimensional at times. And while they're ultimately distractions that add content to the game, I can't help but love them so much for what they are, especially Battle Bingo. I would gladly take this minigame in every Pokemon game from here on out. The complex bingo cards that could be made with the current roster of nearly a thousand Pokemon? It would be so fun. But I digress. Overall, I'm a massive fan of all the gameplay mechanics used in XD. While the game can feel a bit slow-paced at times due to how long a single turn can take in double battles, the added difficulty that comes along with it makes that extra time spent worth it. It allows the players so much more freedom with their strategies, even given the somewhat limited roster of Pokemon available. And as I already said in detail, Shadow Pokemon are handled so well in this game to the degree where many fans, myself included, are waiting for them to be utilized again in the future of the franchise, even if that's just a pipe dream. And with the little additions of the games at Realgam Tower and the newly available wild Pokemon, XD adds so much to the Ori region that Colosseum established for us. Even with all the great things I've already said about this game, there's still so many fun details I need to bring up, and I felt it's best to leave some of those points for right now. There are some really iconic characters in this game, both for design and how memorable they are. And while there are several Cypher members I could bring up here, there's only three people I really want to mention. The first of which we've already met, the main character's little sister, Jovi. I'll put it simply, Jovi sucks! Not only does she leave her friend in the middle of a game of hide and seek, but she also talks down to the player character so much that you can't help but hate her obnoxious little face. Not to mention the whole running into a big dude and almost getting her face punched in thing. Add on the fact that she always talks about herself in the third person, and you have the perfect recipe for a hateable character. But that being said, I kind of think that's the point. I think she was made to be universally hated on, kind of similar to Danzo and Naruto if you know what I'm saying. The community comes together to hate this little reject, and I think it's beautiful. The second character worth mentioning is my boy Chobin. A very minor character in the game, Chobin is the assistant to Dr. Kaminko, and he's actually our first real battle in the game, while we're searching for the aforementioned little demon child. Chobin can be pretty forgettable for some, but not for me. His design is laughably stupid, but in a very endearing way. He has so many funny lines, and is always entertaining whenever you talk with him. He has a series of videos going over Dr. Kaminko's inventions, including unhealthy sandals that guarantee painful feet and chronic worsening of your health, a power-saving refrigerator that only turns on when someone is directly in front of it, and a discount calendar with only 300 days on it, saving you 65 days a year. Somehow. Yeah, I think you can see why I like him so much. With dorky glasses like that, how could you not love him? As for the third character, if you've played this game before, you probably know who I'm going to say. Returning from Colosseum, we have the amazing Mirror B. In Colosseum, Mirror B was one of the four admins of Cypher and was a pretty important antagonist in the grand scheme of the game. In XD, he's been downgraded a bit, but I think it's for the best. Now estranged from Cypher in every way, Mirror B spends his time traveling around the region trying to obtain new Pokémon for himself. At first, this doesn't sound important, but Mirror B is very essential to the player when it comes to Shadow Pokémon. If at any point the player fails to snag a Shadow Pokémon, it will make its way onto Mirror B's team eventually. And through use of a radar that you obtain that shows you Mirror B's whereabouts, you can go to him in battle until you're able to snag the Shadow Pokémon you initially missed. As great as he is in Colosseum, I think XD gives him a better role to shine in. Not only do I like his outfit better, but the purpose of giving the player another chance to snag Shadow Pokémon is a welcome gift that you simply didn't have in Colosseum. In fact, there's been plenty of times I've been happy to miss a Shadow Pokémon in XD just because I get to see this massive Afro-wielding king again. And most of that joy comes from his music literally the best music in the game. Mirabi has a great soundtrack back in Colosseum. But just like with his outfit, I honestly prefer his theme in XD more.
Without a doubt, Mirabi is the best and most iconic character in either of these two games, and I appreciate the role XD carved out for him outside of just being another Cypher admin. Another feature I want to touch on really quickly is Mount Battle. I mentioned it when talking about the story, but Mount Battle itself is the ultimate trainer challenge in the Ori region. To win, you have to get through 10 different areas, each consisting of 10 battles, for a total of 100. Now you're probably thinking, that sounds like a lot of effort. And you know what? You're right. While the lower levels are a great place to train throughout the game if you need it, completing the entirety of Mount Battle is a bit of a chore. There's a good chunk of Mount Battle where you'll be facing trainers at a higher level than the final boss of XD, meaning it isn't a task you're up to finishing until well into the post-game. When I was a kid, I remember getting as far as Area 7 until I decided it wasn't worth my trouble. I was a busy kid, I had things to do, I guess. Nonetheless, even though it's quite the gargantuan task to complete, it's just another feature in the game that you can keep playing well after you beat the game itself. And like I said before, I'm always down for some extra challenge in a Pokemon game. And trust me, when you reach the higher areas, you'll be facing quite the challenge, with the final battle being heavily stacked against you in terms of power. So while not my favorite feature of XD, it's still something I appreciate in the grand scheme of the game. And hey, for beating all 100 floors of Mount Battle, you get the amazing reward of one of the Johto starters. At level 5. I mean, yes, they have the ultimate move of their type, but it's a bit lackluster of a reward. But I guess the bigger reward is having completed Ori's ultimate trainer challenge after all. Moving away from the story itself, another fantastic feature I wanted to bring up is the Versus mode. A return feature from Colosseum, Versus mode allows the player to participate in battles with a predetermined team. Accessed from the home screen before starting up your saved adventure, you can either play against a computer or with a friend, in battles ranging from easy to ultimate difficulty. Now if I'm being honest, even though XD was the only one between itself and Colosseum to have the two-player quick battle option, I think Colosseum had the better of these two modes mostly because it allowed the player to do either a single or double battle, with options having a 6 on 6 battle either way. Comparing this to XD's strict option of double battles, with only 2 Pokemon per side, it's easy to see why Colosseum is the preferred option. Regardless, this mode is still a great addition to these games. Even if you've played this game alone 99% of the time like me, it's refreshing to have a Pokemon game give you the option to just do some quick battles with a friend if you want your Pokemon fixed but don't want to watch one friend play the story mode by themselves. No effort on your part either, just choose a team and have a battle. Very similar to what Pokemon Showdown has become for a lot of people. And if you're lucky enough to have the hardware to connect your Game Boy to your GameCube, you can have your Gen 3 battles on a much bigger 3D scale with your Pokemon from those games. So yeah, even though it's a minor feature that you can entirely skip over if you weren't paying attention, Versus Mode is a very appreciated addition to both of these games. Yet another cool detail of XD is how it teases two Gen 4 Pokémon, even though it's a third gen game. These two Pokémon are Munchlax and Bonsly. While not too important to the overall narrative, it's a really fun decision to have these two play a role in the story, plus they're an extra way to get the player excited about the upcoming generation. That is, if you were playing XD back in the day. Furthermore, Bonsly is extra special as you can actually fight with it in the game. If you're able to return the Bonsly to its owner, you'll receive a Bonsly card, which you can use at my favorite, the Battle Bingo. For the first, and to my knowledge only time in Pokemon, this means you can fight with the Pokemon in a generation before it was actually released. Yes, it's confined to the Battle Bingo, but it's still a cool detail nonetheless. And speaking of cool details, the last thing I want to say about this game has actually been staring us in the face basically the whole time, and that's Shadow Lugia. I won't beat around the bush, this is one of, if not the coolest design of any Pokemon ever. Yes, I'll die on that hill. Whether you're towards the end of the game, watching the opening cutscene, or even just looking at the box art, it's hard not to be captivated by Shadow Lugia. It has such a badass presence that sticks in your head from the moment you see it. I'm honestly upset that you can't keep it this way when trading it to another game, as you have to purify it back into regular Lugia before doing any trading, meaning it's only ever available in XD. But I guess that's what makes it so special just like the Shadow Pokemon mechanic itself. Okay, to bring this extensive video to a close, I think you understand why I hold this game in such high regard. As I said earlier, it's not perfect. There are some minor improvements I would make if I had the chance. But then again, I would say that for every Pokemon game. As is, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness is such a memorable experience among the long list of Pokemon games out there, and I implore everybody to play it if you have the chance. Unfortunately, it's only ever been officially released to GameCube, but if you have the ability to play it, you won't be sorry you did. From the fascinating gimmick of Shadow Pokemon, to the dark and exciting storyline, the strict double battle playstyle, to the unique roster of available Pokemon, 
the extra gameplay additions, to the iconic Mirror B, Pokemon XD has so many things going for it, and in my opinion will always be one of, if not, the best Pokemon game. I honestly could have said so much more about this game if I really wanted to, but the script for this video ended up getting so long that I knew I had to limit myself. If there's a detail about this game I didn't touch on in the video that you feel is worth mentioning, leave a comment and let me know. As you can tell, I love this game to bits, and would love to chat with some of y'all about what makes it so special. Thanks for watching this extra long video, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Chances are if you've made it this far, you're clearly a fan of something I'm doing here. I've got plenty more videos in the works, including the one many of you were probably expecting next, the worst Gen 2 Pokemon. That video will hopefully be up in the next couple weeks, barring any big life distractions. But for now, thanks for watching again. A big shout out to my friend Maddie for helping get me set up with everything I needed to play and record the game. It was so nostalgic going through it again, and I couldn't have done it without your help. And lastly before I go, as thanks for making it to the end of the video, here's a picture of my dog. Talk to y'all soon.